Tiki's Trinkets here, and today I have for y'all another polymer clay tutorial. This is a sculpture tutorial. I was not anticipating making any more Banjo and Kazooie characters anytime soon. I wanted to make more later in the future. I'm sorry I'm messing with the ears, which I'll get to that in a minute. But I just didn't think I would be soon. This tutorial is because I had a very large Etsy sale, which I mentioned in the video, for a total of seven different Banjo and Kazooie characters, so... I'm pretty much making the entire cast for this lady, <laughs> and I'm not going to complain. This is awesome. I love big cells like this. My um, biggest cells I've ever had were about nine or ten sculptures at one time for Five Nights at Freddy's, and my singing monster sculptures. Somebody bought all nine that I had left. Yeah, so that was pretty great. <laughs> but yeah, um, first before I get into that, I'm going to make this intro as short as possible, uh, although we're already at a minute. The ears are not bunny ears because I'm going to start the Halloween headband month early. If you have not watched my videos in October in the past, then welcome. Every October I like to wear Halloween headbands for the holiday season. And then by the end of the month I like to wear something a little more spectacular than the rest of the day. Or the rest of the month. If I have the time. If not, I still wear another Halloween headband in honor of Halloween. I know it's September and some people will disagree with me, but it's already spooky season in my mind, so I figured I'd get started early. This tutorial I did for this, as you saw in the thumbnail, is Bottles, which is one of the side characters from the game, from the PlayStation game Banjo and Kazooie. There are several different characters, several variation transformations of characters, and this, again, is a side character that's friends with Banjo and his sister Tootie. And I believe, if I remember right, he lives outside of their house because he's a mole or a groundhog and he lives in a hole near their home, if I'm remembering that 100%. It's been a long time since I played the game. Some things I remember, some things not so much. But yeah, he just came out so stinking adorable. I already sent a photo to the customer. She's super happy. I also do not include the process of me making the claws on the video because it's just too long as it is. But just make teardrop shapes cut off the fatter ends, and stick them on the hands. Use glue to adhere them or liquid Sculpey. And I also put an individual piece of metal floral wire. Ah, there we go. This itty bitty green wire, just about like two, one to two centimeters in length in each individual little spike. Yeah, I did that for every single spike. All 50 million of them. And the nose. And his... Well, the nose down to his, like, I don't know what to call that, his muzzle. There's also a toothpick through him for stability, so yeah, keep that in mind. Structure is key when making a cake and when making clay. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I'm going to be working on this for the next month to two months. So I might be recording a few of these, not all of them, because I'm already on Gruntilda, which is the witch of the game. And why can't that focus? Yeah, there we go. I am not making a tutorial for her, but she is... Oh, you want to automatically adjust that time. But she is being made. Some things I'll do on camera, some things I'll do off camera, so stay tuned. I don't know what next week's YouTube video is going to be, but I'm glad to have this week's video. Sorry about last week's and not getting one done. I sometimes lack inspiration making something week after week. It's a bit taxing to think of something unique every week. So... Bear with me. But I'm sure you guys do enjoy my content when I post, so stay tuned. And I try to post weekly, so come and visit me every Friday around any time. Or come Saturday. That way it's a little bit easier for you. So you know that if there's a video, it'll be guaranteed to be up by Saturday. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the Halloween headband month from September to October. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all in next week's video, which I don't know what it is yet, but we'll find out together. Alright, let's get into this. Hello my bunnies, it's Tiki's Trinkets here. And today I have for y'all another polymer clay tutorial. I hope y'all are ready for Banjo and Kazooie because we have a ton of it coming up. I sold my 2D sculpture that I made a while back from Banjo and Kazooie. 
you can see that under my tutorials and under the Banjo and Kazooie playlist on my YouTube channel. But I sold that and they wanted six other characters from the game. I'm also making Banjo and Kazooie again for an extra sculpture for them because they ordered six sculptures. <laughs> so I'm going to be making six characters from the game. I might record some, some I might not record, so just keep that in mind. Today we are making Bottles, which is one of the side characters that talks to Tootie and Banjo in the game. So yeah, let's get into this. Also, I'm going to edit out scenes where I'm rolling to try to make this video as fast as possible. Or any unnecessary parts, I'm going to edit out. Like right now, I'm about to stop it, move all this to the side, and then come back in just a second. I will see you guys there. I'm going to start with the black color clay. Just don't mind me, I'm going to turn my music down a little bit. I have on copyrighted music, so I don't want it to be playing too loudly in the background. But also, I'm going to be so busy doing this that I don't want... <laughs> I'm going to be so busy with this, I don't want to just sit here in silence. Or just random YouTube videos playing the whole time, so I'm going to make this work. <laughs> Alright, so first we're starting off by making Bottles' body torso area. I know I said I was going to cut out the rolling, but if I'm talking, that's fine, because I'm actively talking. But any lulls in it, I'm going to stop it, because editing these videos is a pain in the rump. Editing tutorial videos plus recording tutorial videos is also a pain in the rump, because it's a lot of time I have to kind of, um, what do you call it? Like, file through? That's a good way to put it. I want that bigger than that. So I'm probably going to add that to it. I might have to get out another pack of black clay. Because I have to make his head, his arms, and his torso out of black. So that's what I'm working on right now. That's why I want it to be nice and chunky. I still want that a little bigger, so yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should have put like something in the center of this. Like... Um... Like another color clay to like fill the void although i'm worried that i'll mess up and then they'll get mixed together i'm just too worried about those colors blending together okay so i'm just gonna do this as it's that's a lot thicker as you can see i'm trying to make this nice and chunky i'm gonna do his head separately and then i'm gonna blend his head into his body because he's what i think is a groundhog or either a gopher based on the shape and the color of him. This is black clay, by the way. And yeah, let me talk about that customer. So um, she bought 2D from me this morning, uh, September 7th, and then messaged me around noon after I'd gotten her thing almost completely packed up and said, hey, do you do custom orders? And asked me about the rest of the gang. Pretty much all the villains from the game slash alternate characters from the game and some good guys, some bad guys. Yeah, so yeah. I'm officially doing almost the entire game now. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm very happy to be getting a sale. Multiple sales. Because <laughs> this is one sale, but it is one large sale. This is technically like seven and one. Because even though it's just her, I still have to make seven sculptures. So, it's a big beefy boy. Alright. That looks good. Now I'm going to flatten him out. I don't want to flatten this down too much, though. Wait a minute, let me just skip this real quick. I also have a reference photo. Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> Dang allergies. A bottle's pulled up in a minimized screen on my computer. And, um, sorry, I just had a moment. And I'm using that as a reference as I go. Jeez, I can't, I can't function today. There we go. There we go, flatten that out. I'm still worried about this music being too loud. I doubt you'll be able to hear that. My computer's on 10, but still. I need to buy, like, Bluetooth earbuds or something. Well, in the time that I'm doing this, the Bluetooth earbuds would probably die. I'm also trying to make these heights, that like the height of the characters, nice, possibly accurate to the characters, possibly. I'm not going to go full gung-ho on that. There's something I want to, oh, toothpick. Toothpick for structure. 
And then I always cut off the bottom part so it sits flat. If I need to make this shorter later, I will. But I try not to cut out too much to start with, just in case I need it to be tall. I don't want to waste toothpicks for no reason. Well, I try not to waste anything for no reason. Okay, so that looks good. So now I'm going to do his head. So I'm going to take... Oh, I might not need another pack. Because his um, little feetsies, you don't have legs. Or the beige and the tan clay. And um, the arms I might be able to do with this. Let me just get as much as I can here. Alright. And I'm going to come back to you in just a moment after I get this. I just rolled out a little teardrop shape, trying to make it a little more pointed near the top, a little more curved in towards the bottom here. That way I can blend it into the body piece. Hopefully this will look how I want it to look. I'm just going to cut it off right about there. I think it's good to start with. Also, that's way too much toothpick. I'm going to have to cut some of this off. But that's why I always gauge it little by little. So just in case you need to chop some out, you can. Okay, there we go. Try to put that on for size. There we go. Perfect. Now, what we're going to do is blend this into the body. So, again, it's another thing we're going to do off camera. I'm just going to use this here blending tool and blend it to look nice and seamless. So we'll have a nice, like, pear-shaped body. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys back there as well. Now we have this all nice and blended out, nice and smooth, looking pretty, looking like an actual groundhog slash gopher. Not sure what he's supposed to be. Um, now we just need to make the arms. So this is the excess I cut off the headpiece, so I'm just going to take that, plus a little bit of that. But yeah, um, about the sale, I'm very, 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 very happy to get a sale. Especially because I sold a um, pre-made sculpture before I sold these. I always like selling something I've already made once before I sell a custom order. I know that sounds weird, but it's it's because I have a bunch of stuff taking up my inventory. Taking up room. I need more space for stuff is what I'm saying. Um, okay, I think that'll be fine. Just cut this in half. But I'm also happy to have this big sale. I've been begging for a sale this month because I was negative last month. I won't say how much, but I was negative some money last month. Because I had to buy business cards and boxes and printer ink. I'm about to need packing peanuts, which isn't too bad. That's only like three or four bucks. But still, it all adds up eventually. And it becomes a deficit on your business when you have to buy these supplies. I'm not even counting like new supplies for things I'm trying, like thinking about. Like necklaces, I'm thinking about doing that again. I'm thinking about making picture frames again. But I'm not even counting that into my expenses. Because it's just... Oh, Lord. It's just too soon to count that in. I hadn't listed anything along those sorts. So because of that, I'm not even counting that into the expenses. Okay, just trying to make sure this is thick, but not too thick. Okay, that's nice and pretty. Now I'm going to do the other one. But this is going to put me into a very busy frenzy for all of September to August, so, I mean, that's good. It's a good start to the holiday season, so I'm definitely happy about that. Again, I'm not going to mention the numbers of how much it was, but it was a lot, is all I'll say. So, again, so happy for that. Okay, let me grab the long blade for this. that would probably be easier for now. I want that to be kind of like narrower, so let me try to get these back to about the same. I want them to be about the same diameter for the wrist. Okay, that's good. Move that to the side. Now, I need these shoulders cut at an angle. I'm going to cut it right above the inch mark on the cutting board. Okay, 
sorry if the TV's loud in the other room. My mom and my sister are watching It Chapter 2. Great movie. They're watching the remake, not the original. But both the movies are great in their own light. But because of that, it's very loud. And I'm aware of it. Same thing like with me playing the copyrighted music, hoping that it's not playing too loud. Okay, I don't like that. I'm going to cut that little bit off. There we go. Okie dokie. Curl that in so it's nice and rounded and not pointed. There we go. There we go. Now we got two perfectly shaped arms that are matching. Yeah, that'll be a great size. I'm not going to leave these arms on now, obviously, because I still have to do his vest. But, just want to make sure these are sized up nice and smoothly. There we go. There we go. Perfect! It's still a little bit longer on that side. I'll probably trim just a hair off. But yeah, okay, so now I'm done with the black. So, what is next? Do I want to do the hands and feet next, or his vest? I think I'm going to do his vest next. So we are going to move on to the darker orange, which is going to be this one, which is just orange. And the accent colors will be sweet potato orange. I'm going to stop, wash my hands, and go ahead and get this rolled out nice and flat for us. I'll see you there. I just rolled out the clay into a ball, and then I got it about that flat. Not too flat, still workably flat. And then I put all the scrap pieces to the side. That would actually be good to save to the side for his glasses. So let me just save those pieces right there so we can double up on that. So then I cut it into a rhombus shape. Like that. Then after I cut it into the rhombus shape, I just took it and wrapped it around his body. As you can see me struggling with molding this out right now as I speak. I'm trying to make sure it looks nice and pretty. And not too weirdly shaped. It looks weird that one spot, but the rest of it looks fine. But, um, I wrapped the Rama shape around his body. Oh, no. That, that got messed up. I should have done this on camera, but I didn't. But that's because I'm trying to make this video reasonably length. But cut, roll it out nice and thin, just like you see it here. Cut it into a Rama shape. And then wrap it around this body, making sure that the tail of the coat here, or the vest, whatever you want to call it, lines up with about the position it does on his character on the game then i'm just going to tuck these in because his are kind of tucked in a little bit into his sides because he's a nice and round boy then after that i took this circle cut cookie cutter thing that i have here it's a very small circle that came with the basic set of cookie cutters that you can buy at um hobby lobby joann's michaels then i just cut the circle out perfectly Dug it out with my X-Acto blade, the pieces that had black on it. The black got mixed in, I'm saving that for later somewhere else. But the spare pieces that didn't get messed up too bad, I can set to the side right here. Now I'm going to show you me making his glasses, which is also the dark orange color. Just orange, not sweet pumpkin. Although in the old game it shows his um, eyes as, well not his eyes, his glasses at a darker color. But in the remastered version i think his glasses in the old game his um gosh i can't get my thoughts together in the old game his glasses were a brown looking color but in the remastered version the glasses match the color of his vest so i'm gonna go with that and match the color of his vest because i just think that'll look a little bit nicer so that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna cut this into a nicer rectangle shape Just by cutting the sides off. Obviously I have to make sure this fits around his head. Once I do that. If not, then it's all for moot. I also have a triangle cutter sitting here from that same set that I'm going to use to make the sweet potato into the diamond pattern all over his body. Okay, that's good. Now I need to make two circular pieces. That's going to be a much easier way to do this. But first, I guess I should go ahead and wrap this around his head. Make sure it fits. And not too 
long or too small. Okay, we have to accommodate for his snout, so this has to go a little higher up than you would want it to be. There we go. Now we need to make his glasses. So we're going to take this, take it and cut it in half. And then roll these in the little balls. Then I'm just going to flatten down with my X-Acto blade. I'm going to move this up a little bit more real quick first. I'm looking at it from different angles, trying to make sure everything looks nice. Sometimes you look at it from a different angle and stuff don't line up the way it's supposed to. Like now that's too long again. Alright, alright. Nerve-wracking sometimes when you're trying to make this stuff perfect. Then we're just going to take these and flatten them out. Then I'm going to scrape them up. And don't worry if it scrapes the bottom a little bit. That side's not going to show. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, and his eyes are actually touching directly, so we actually do need this to come in a little bit closer. Then we're gonna Okay, I want this hugging his body, but I don't want this completely clinging to his body. That's why I keep pulling at these. Okay. There we go. Now I have to take this and make it a little bit longer by gently pulling it. Ta-da! That's all you have to do when something's not quite long enough. Just gently don't do that. Give it a gentle tug to make sure it reaches where you need it to be. There we go. There we go. Looking great. Looking great. Just gonna take that and tuck that. Alright, let me see. Is his glasses blended? No, they are not blended, so that is not necessary, but I am going to blend them out because I just think it'll look a little nicer. Just blending the rounded parts into the frame part. Well, into the legs of the glasses, should I say. I'm just very meticulous about blending this stuff. There we go. I'm very meticulous about messing it up. That's what I'm meticulous about. I know I'm not as talkative as I was in my previous videos, but I'm focusing a lot harder on this sculpture than I did on, like, the rings, because they're a little bit more simple. Okay, that's great. So I'm just going to move that to the side. We're not working with that anymore. That's all that that we need. Next will be sweet potato, but first I'm going to put the eyes on here so that we will have the eyes nice and wide. Now, he does have white showing around his eyes, so I might include that. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and put the blue on here just so it's, you know what I mean? Just so it's there, so I can remember that it's there. So I'm just going to open up my handy-dandy little box of beads here, and I'm going to take the 6 millimeter size, and we want a dark blue color. Like that. Okay, there we go. Okay, just to be safe, I didn't have white in here, but I'm going to go ahead and put white on the eyes. And Sorry about abruptly stopping there. I decided to go with the smaller, not the 4 millimeter size, but the... Not the 6 millimeter. Oh yeah, it is 4 millimeter. Okay, that's the size I went with. And it's just because I was trying to get the effect of his eyes being more goofy and going more towards the center. So I think that looks good. I put on his arms for now just to kind of give an idea of perspective on how he's looking. He's looking chunky and adorable. Cannot complain with that. Now I've rolled out the sweet potato and I'm going to make a bunch of little triangles to decorate his jacket. He actually has diamond shapes, not triangles. But hey, it's probably better to do diamond, I mean, to do triangles for me because... I'm going to be doing a lot of these on this jacket for the pattern. 
So I'm cutting out as many as I possibly can here and hoping that that will make them better, I guess. I don't know. I wonder if I can peel this up and just leave the triangles. So far, yes. Looking good. Okay. Okay, just keep encouraging myself. Yes. Oh, looking uh, fantastic. I pulled up one triangle here at the bottom just a little bit, but that's not bad. Now, to remove them, I'm going to use the long blade here. So they'll come up nice and easy. Even if I lose a little right there, that's fine. Just put the excess there and get it ready to go on the vest. I'm going to have to remove the arms, though, for this part. Okay. There we go. I'm also going to have to cut pieces off in order to fit it. I need my reference photo. Okay. So, they're going to come out like that. So, I have to cut off the excess that goes into the circle. Okay. So, put it on. And very gently... Cut it. Okay. Looking good. Sorry about that. I had to abruptly stop because my sister got attacked by a roach and started screaming. And I figured y'all didn't want to be hollered at the whole time, so. Okay. I'm just going to show you how I did this pattern with these triangles. And then I'll do the entire pattern off camera. So I just started right there. Then I'm going to do another one right here. Is that how I need to do it? I need this to actually be smaller. There we go. There we go. I'm definitely going to have to make more triangles. there we go so that's one whole side is going to take up three triangles so then to make the cross diamond pattern I'm going to take another triangle and do it like that and I think that'll work yeah that'll work and then again cut off the excess where'd the circle cutter go did I put that up already oh there it is that then I'm gonna take this and put this here so it creates the diamond pattern I'll blend those in later And as long as there's no black on that, I could just put it back in the pile. Okay, so now I got the diamond shape pattern. The triangles that connected together to make diamonds. Believe it or not, I had pretty much just enough. I did struggle to connect these in the back though because the shapes did not become even because of the fact that there wasn't enough room to do the pattern enough. Like, enough times around for it to be nice and even. To say the least. Sorry, I'm just doing a little more blending. But yeah, it came out pretty good. I hate this little part right here, but it's the only way that this makes any sense. 
Because if I just disconnect this and have that there, it's just floating into nowhere. I guess I could have had this come down all the way. And this go down all the way. Oh well. I might or might not edit that later. Who cares? We're not going to talk about that now. I did also twist his head just to the side just a little bit to give him a little more character like his design is on the reference photo I'm using. I just think it's a cute pose. Just trying to keep his head in shape too because I keep having to hold his head. So I don't want to put too much pressure on it. Speaking of keeping things in shape, now we're going to make the fur texture. I'm just going to do a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. You can do like long fur, like by using your exacto blade and doing strokes like that. Like that. But I found several different photos. Some with him with long fur, some with him with like fuzzy fur, like a teddy bear. So this is the fur texture that I'm going to go with. Just using this tool that came with this big set you can get for Hobby Lo from Hobby Lobby for $40. Or if you can just find something similar to this or just tape a bunch of little small metal wires together so you can poke with them that'll probably be the most budget friendly version budget friendly option should i say all right but just so you can see that's exactly what this pattern is going to look like i'm going to do it all over the black part his arms are not attached yet they're just temporarily like that and then i will move on to either the tan or the beige but i'll tell you about that then so we can make his limbs for now i'm going to finish this up off camera got the texture all done as we can see ignore the black on my hand from where I was wiping clay on myself I've just washed my hands it's still on there but yeah as we can see the texture came out really nice and furry overall because of that look and yes it does continue all the way around and on the top of his head which I might have to redo his head I did his arms I took his arms off and did the interior parts here and I also redid the back of this so it looks a little more even now it's not 100%, but, oh well, our pattern's really 100%. Next, we're going to make his mouth and his hands and feet. His hands and feet are going to be very, very similar, so I'm only going to show you one of those. The others I will do off camera. So let me just cut this in half because that's actually a little too big. That's about the right size. This is probably still a little bigger than I need. Then I'm going to roll it into a teardrop shape. looking good and he has three toes and four fingers so I'm gonna start with his hand roll it into the teardrop shape press it down not too hard though just enough cut off the excess save that for just a minute because we're gonna need that and we don't really need fingers here all we need is enough room poke holes. So three fingers, three claws. One, two, and three. I repeat some of the holes just in case punching the holes next to them kind of destroys the hole. Usually does. So you usually have to redo them a few times. See how I got that. Then for the thumb, I'm going to take one of these excess pieces here and roll out a slightly bigger ball than that. Roll this out separately. Then his thumb is on the inside near his body, so we're just going to take it. It needs to be about the same length. So I'm going to put it like right there, cut off the excess here, there we go, and just blend this gently into the top of the hand. Also before you do all the hands and I mean the fingers and stuff, be good to check the wrist to make sure it's the accurate size. This is going to need to be a little smaller so I'm just going to have to press it and make it the right size, gently. Then for the thumbnail, we're just going to take this. And I don't mean the thumbnail of the video, uh -huh. I mean his thumbnail. Take that, make a hole too. Alright. 
We're going to need glue. There's always glue stuck on the top, so I just take it, rake it against my dust, or take my X-Acto blade on it, scrape the excess dried up glue off. Be careful doing that at home. And I'm just going to take this and dab this just a little bit. Just enough to make that seal. I know I'm getting quiet again, but I'm trying to make sure this is absolutely perfect. There we go. There we go. There we go. Also, as you're going along, keep whatever tool you're using to make polka dots. And touch it up every now and again. There we go. Looks good. Yep. Now let me look at his fingers. They do indent just a little bit on his hands, so let me just... That way you can clearly tell the fingers apart. Do that one more time. Perfect. Okay, that looks good. I'll probably shave some of the thumb off just to make it a little thinner off camera. But for now, I'm going to move on to his face. So I'm going to close my glue back up for now because we don't want to dry it out. We're going to take the bigger piece and roll it into a tube-like shape. Just take it, gently roll. That's almost an inch. Then I'm going to press this down gently. This is just the size I'm starting with. It might need to be shorter or longer, but I won't know until I wrap it around the face. And I'm just smoothing it out as I go so it doesn't get too fingerprinty. Just gonna place it here. That's looking good, actually. Now you know he has a nose that sticks out, so we're gonna put that on separately, and then I'm just gonna indent his mouth on with a tool. So we're gonna take this piece right here that I set aside. All right, then we know we need it like that, so we're just going to take it, cut it. That might be more or less than I need, but I won't know until I put it on there. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now I'm just going to take this and blend it into the head and see if I like it. If not, I will take it off and I will redo it. So bear with me as I'm blending. I mean, don't get me wrong, he's pretty cute just as he is now. But I think I wanted a little bit thicker on the nose. But that's what it looks like so far. I'm going to finish thickening out this nose, adjust the size, like the length if I need to. And I'll go ahead and end it in the mouth do the hands and feet and then i'll be done and i'll show you guys the finished product thank you all so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video i hope it was helpful and i will show you the finished product at the end see you there